A cold, bitter wind blew through the tiny village. Windows were shuttered, children were beckoned indoors, and night fell a little too early. What was once a bustling square was deserted in a matter of minutes. It was still now. Quiet. The silence was broken by the slow and steady clip-clop of a horse in the distance. As the minutes crawled on, the sound grew louder. A cloud blocking the moon shifted, and the light revealed a large white horse at the top of the hill. In the saddle was a tall, thin man. He tipped up his wide-brimmed hat with fingers ending in unusually long nails, revealing his face in the pale light. Bright brown eyes seemed to pulse with vitality, betrayed his wrinkled paper-thin face and frail bird-like frame. He nimbly dismounted, got down on his hands and knees, and began combing through the grass. After an hour, he had canvassed the entire hillside. Then, he stopped. Reaching into his pocket, he retrieved a small cloth bundle. Laying the bundle on the ground, he used the nail of his forefinger to slowly cut a large gash in his palm. Using his uninjured hand, he dexterously snatched the cloth bundle from the ground and opened it, revealing a small white seed. Transferring the seed to his injured palm, he squeezed, blood spilling onto the grass below. The veins in his thin forearms seemed to pop out from exertion. He then loosened his grip and opened his palm. The seed had turned jet black. It moved slightly, steadily, a constant, subtle movement, like a tiny, beating heart. He used his blood-stained nail to scratch a small divot into the ground. Dropping in the seed, he flexed his wounded palm for a few seconds. He then stretched his whole body, raising his two unblemished hands to the sky, dappled in moonlight. He retrieved his cloth bundle returned it to his pocket, and mounted his horse. Surveying the scene below, he smiled, pulled at the reins, and started his slow descent into the village. Later that night, a small sprout pushed its way through the earth, breaking the soil, greeted by the moonbeams that shone brightly. At first glance, the sprout looked like any other sprout. It was thin, green, and barely clinging to life. But as the hours passed, something changed. The flowers on the hill began to droop. The bushes and shrubs withered, and the sprout grew. It grew into a sapling, which grew into a small tree, which in turn grew into a large tree. By the time it was the size of an average oak, every bit of life surrounding it was dead. The corpses of grass, roses, and dandelions littered the hill, choked of life. But the tree continued to grow. By the time the light of dawn touched its branches, it was the tallest thing for miles. Yet, in all its development, it never sprouted leaves. It hung over the village. 
so barren, yet so strong. How could such a dead thing grow? Hey, Dave, one villager said, staring at the tree. Yeah, Dave replied. Does that tree look evil to you? Oh my god, that's exactly what I was going to say. It just looks evil. You don't often get a chance to call something evil, but that just hits the nail right on the head. Another villager hearing the discussion joined in. So what are we talking about? The giant tree over there that just sprouted overnight. Oh, the evil tree? Yeah, exactly. How did it get here? Well, someone had to plant it. Did you plant it, Dave? Now? Did you plant it, Mike? Not me. Did you plant it, stranger who suddenly appeared in our village of thirty people the day the tree grew? They all turned to the tall, thin man. He was sitting on a bench, flipping through a worn, leather-bound book titled How to Make Your Demonic Creations Less Conspicuous. No. Anybody's guess, really. Andy sighed. Well, just to be safe, we're going to hang you, all right? Then we're going to desecrate your body, get a priest to bless it because we desecrated it, and then bury you in an unmarked grave. Okay? Yeah, that's pretty much par for the course. And they did just that. The tree was chopped down, uprooted, corded into firewood, then burned in a giant furnace. The ashes were then collected, blessed, and dropped to the bottom of an unused well. In all of the activity and destruction, no one noticed the small fat man staring down at them all from atop the hill, a burlap sack on his back. The sack muffled the shrieks and other unnatural sounds that came from its depths. The fat man smacked at it when its contents started to get too noisy and move. Shifting the weight of the sack, he pulled out a map, a pencil, and took one last look down at the busy villagers below, striking the town off the map with a large X, muttering, Well, uh, this place is definitely a no-go. And disappeared back over the hill.